Hey everybody, Matt Koval here. I just got this cool box delivered from Amazon. I got it explicitly because I think my players are going to find the deck of many things in an upcoming episode, and I just thought it would be kind of cool if they could find it in a neat little prop. This shows you how kind of crazy I get. I actually bought a prop to keep my prop deck of many things in. I'll show you the deck next time. This episode we're going to talk about dead ends and what happens when your players end up following a plot and getting stuck. This came up in one of my recent sessions, and I think a big part of the series is going to be me just taking notes when I run D&D about stuff that I think would be interesting to talk about. Specifically, one of the players is a druid, and he was in his swamp. This is the swamp that his master uh, owns, and his master is missing. And as he's looking around, investigating the circumstances of the master druid's disappearance, a dryad shows up. Now, I gave this dryad important information to give to the party, and they were unable to get that information out of it because none of them spoke Sylvan. Now, this is going to tell you a lot about me, but dryads in the monster manual speak elven and sylvan, but I like the idea that dryads and the rest of the fae are more alien than the ones we meet in the monster manual, and so they don't speak a common language like elven. You know, you kind of have to meet them on their terms. They have an alien mindset, and so this dryad just stood there looking at the druid and the rest of the party trying to communicate to them and unable to. So this created an interesting situation. Many of the players were frustrated because they felt like, surely we should be able to communicate with this intelligent being. They kind of treated it like two humans trying to communicate. Like, if you were Russian and I were English, even though we don't speak the same language, through various gestures, we would be able to build a common language that would be really rudimentary, but we'd be able to get our ideas across. And that didn't work with this dryad because it was an alien being. So I had some players that were frustrated because they felt like they should be able to communicate with this, but the one player who wasn't frustrated was the druid player. The druid player thought it was neat that there was a part of the campaign setting that was not tailor-made for them. It increased the verisimilitude in the world. He told me this afterwards. In my experience, the players like it if the world they encounter does not feel as though the entire thing was made for them. When your players choose languages, they begin to wonder, are these important? Does it matter what language I pick? They should feel like the answer is yes. Having there be bad guys or NPCs that speak languages they don't speak add to that sense of the reality of the larger world but it can mean that you can have a plot point that you can't deliver to your players. So some of the players were frustrated, the druid player wasn't frustrated, but ultimately, whatever information that dryad had, they didn't get. And the solution to this is, don't have there be plot points that only one person has and the players can't communicate with them. I had, before this even started, made sure that there were other clues around, that the information the players needed could be got from many different ways. That's not something I did on purpose, it's just an instinct I've developed now over the last 30 years. I've just learned not to have super critical plot points only available via one NPC who might not have the right language or might get killed off or maybe they never meet that NPC. We'll do a whole other episode on winging it. A lot of people have asked me about improving and advice for improving, and I have lots of advice for improv. I'm not talking about improv like stand-up comedy. I'm talking about improv like when your players go off the rails of the adventure you have ready, what do you do? In this instance, the players couldn't talk to the dryad. They couldn't get the information out of them. But I had made sure that when they searched the area around the Master Druid's Grove, they saw blue flecks of paint, evidence of the blue skin goblin tribe. So of course they follow the blue skin goblin tribe back to their mine and they will discover what happened to that druid. So I made sure when I designed that encounter that there were multiple outputs. The dryad was one output. The blue paint was another output. What if they hadn't noticed the blue paint? I might say that they notice uh, signs of a body being dragged through the swamp. I just made that up. I had never planned on putting signs of a body being dragged through the swamp, but there has to be the opportunity for the ranger player to fail to notice tracks. So the downside is that the real solution to dead ends is to make sure that there are multiple outputs from any given encounter. And ultimately, it's okay if the players end up meeting someone and not being able to get the information. Maybe they didn't ask the right question. Maybe they didn't open the right door. Who knows? At one point in the same game, the players tried to convince a half orc villain that they were on the half orc side and the half orc was suspicious and he said what's the password now some of the players guessed what the password was but not the player talking to the half orc he got it wrong and as a result there was a fight and for days afterwards i mean days in the real world my players would say wow i wonder what would have happened if we had gotten the password right they loved the idea that the world was dynamic, that it was branching. The inability to talk to the dryad, the inability to get the password right, just made the world feel more real. And it made them wonder, what if? And that is a powerful tool. When everything's working right, even dead ends fire the player's imaginations and make them feel that your world is more real. Next week, we're going to take our medicine and talk about the sociology of D&D. We're going to examine some of the unexamined assumptions behind some of the stuff I've talked about in the last five episodes. Until then, peace. Out.